guys and welcome to the tack time section of the just in time series. Now in this section we'll be defining what tack time is, we'll be comparing tack time and cycle time, and we'll show you how to work with and manipulate tack time. But before we get started here's a little story to introduce tack time. If you're familiar with the sport of rowing or crew, you know that it's a sport that requires a tremendous amount of strength, stamina, balance, and timing. One of the members of the team is called a coxswain and is explicitly in charge of the timing aspect. He gives a verbal cue that signals when he wants the team to row in unison. This keeps the boat from zigzagging. But if members of the team decide to go with their own timing, then the boat will zigzag or at least move off course. Now consider the entire team being in perfect balance from a timing perspective, but are contributing different amounts of thrust every time they row. This is demonstrated with the different length oars you see on this diagram. Some members of the team may think they are helping by rowing harder, but if they row harder than any of their teammates, then this causes more harm than good. The vessel will zigzag and veer off course. In the ideal state, the timing and the magnitude of the thrust of all eight rowers is balanced. Only then will the vessel move in the straight line in a path towards victory. So tack time forms a cadence by which we need to build. Ideally, the entire production line moves at this cadence. Tact is actually a German word and it refers to a musical beat. The concept of tact was pioneered by the Germans in the 1930s to support their aircraft industry. They created a cadence in which all aircrafts and all supporting stations would work to. This concept was later adopted by Mitsubishi for building aircraft and it finally made its way over to Toyota where we see it today as part of the Toyota production system. Tact time tells you how often one piece should be produced. It's an inverse of a rate. A rate is expressed as parts per time. Tack time is expressed as time per part. They both tell you the same thing, but using a tack time forces you to think in terms of a single piece. Fractions of time are also easier to comprehend than fractions of a part. For example, if I told you to make one part every 1.5 minutes, you could easily understand that you have 1 minute and 30 seconds to produce a part. But if I told you to produce 0.67 parts in a minute, you'd have a harder time understanding that. They both say the exact same thing, but a fraction of a part is more confusing than a fraction of time. So this is the formula for tack time. It's the total time available for production divided by the total number of units the customer wants during that period of time. Let's work an example. You have eight hours available in a day and a customer wants eight planes in that day. I divide eight hours by eight planes and that gives me a tack time of one hour. In other words, if I'm sitting at the end of the production line, I would have to see one plane coming off and completed every hour or we won't meet customer demand. So here's another example. We get a massive order of 2100 planes and the customer says he needs them by next month. To make this easy, I'm going to convert one month into minutes. In any given day, there are eight hours. This works out to 480 minutes. I subtract off 60 minutes for lunches, breaks, and daily machine maintenance. This leaves 420 minutes in a day for production. I multiply by five working days in a week, and then by four because there are four weeks in a month. This gives me 8,400 total minutes of production in a month. I take 8,400 and divide by 2,100 planes, and this tells me I have to complete a plane every four minutes to meet customer demand. So let's look at another example. The customer tells me he wants 2,100 planes over a quarter and let's see how much we have to produce over one month to meet that. So, a simple man like myself would take 8,400 minutes and divide by 2,100 and get a tack time of four minutes. This is incorrect. You have to remember that the time period in both the numerator and the denominator have to match. So, the numerator is expressed in month. We have to convert the denominator into months as well. So, 2,100 planes per quarter is actually 700 planes per month. I take 8,400, and divide by 700 planes and that gives me a tack time of 12 minutes. Now there's a direct relationship between cycle time and tack time. One tells us how often a part is needed. This is tack time. The other tells us how often a part is being produced. This is cycle time. Just to let you know, cycle time must always be less than tack time, never equal. Again, tack time tells you how often an item needs to be produced and cycle time tells you how often they are being produced. So, cycle time has to be less than tack time for us to meet customer demand. So back to the fast food example from the cycle time series. 
Because demand was continuing to rise, the restaurant had to respond by decreasing their cycle times. So, the concept of tack time seems to be basic, but the info the tack time conveys is pretty profound. It tells us immediately how we need to arrange our production line to meet changing customer demand. So, if we see a tack time of 18 seconds, we automatically know that we need to set up a two-line operation. If later in the day, during off-peak hours, tack time changes to 54 seconds, we know we can get by with a single line and two workstations. We can shift the other workers to perform other needed tasks, or we can change the staffing model so that workers are staggered and come in when needed. So TACT not only tells us the cadence at which we need to produce, but it also gives us insight into how we need to set up to meet customer demand. Now the total work content is the amount of time it takes to build a product from beginning to end. You can roughly measure this by telling a single operator to take a product from beginning and build it all the way through, or you can sum up your cycle times. Now, if you take the total work content and divide it by your TAC time, this gives you a theoretical number of workers that you need to meet TAC time. So this represents total work content for building a paper airplane. From start to finish, it takes about 75 seconds to build a plane. The red line represents TAC time. In this case, the customer wants planes every 30 seconds. Now, it would be impossible for one worker to meet the TAC time of 30 seconds. Obviously, we need to redistribute the work over several workers to meet TAC time. So, this was our initial attempt at dividing the total work content among four workers. It's easy to notice that we're still not meeting tack time because worker 4's work is still above the red line. So, we have to level load our line and ideally have a flexible workforce. So this is what the line looks like level loaded. As you can see, we can now easily meet the customer demand of 30 seconds. Now, I want to emphasize again that cycle time should always be less than tack time. If your cycle times are equal to your tack time, any small blip in your system will cause it to crash. There has to be a little slack between your cycle time and your tack time to accommodate these unforeseen issues. Now, over time, workers will get better and better at their tasks and cycle times will decrease naturally. Now, you need to strive towards having a level loaded line. This is a line where all the cycle times are roughly the same and all strictly less than tack time. It also helps a lot to have a flexible workforce. Tack time doesn't change that often, but when it does, it helps have the flexibility to add or subtract workers to meet that new tack time. So earlier I mentioned a flexible workforce. This helps when we have to redistribute work. A workforce with perfect flexibility means that all workers would be able to perform all tasks equally well and at the same rate. Let's assume our workforce is flexible so we can redistribute the work as we see fit. We can now compute the total theoretical number of workers needed. We take 75 seconds and divide it by our tack time of 30 seconds. This gives us a result of 2.5. We'll round up to three because we can't have half a person. So this total work content is actually divided among three workers rather than four. Notice that there's much less slack time in the three worker model compared to the four person model. Now, this is theoretical. We still have to prove this out on the shop floor. So let's take a step back to the four person model. We're gonna take the approach of slowly decreasing and redistributing work rather than immediately moving to our theoretical three person model. Now in the cases where you're trying to gain efficiency through redistributing work, you want to take as much away from the last worker in the line as possible. Simply averaging the work content across all workers will never lead to a reduction of a worker on the line. Continuously remove and redistribute work from the last worker in the line until he can be taken out and redeployed elsewhere in the system. So my initial exposure to lean was in the shipbuilding industry. Ships are generally ordered one at a time and are custom made for the owner. Now, this would make you think that we'd fall into the we're custom trap and lean does not apply. This was definitely not the case. Lean works in heavy industries like shipbuilding and aerospace manufacturing just as well as in high volume manufacturing environments. Now obviously we had to adjust the system to fit our needs. This meant taking a different perspective on tack time. If we did manipulate tack time, we would say we have nine months available and one ship to build. So the tack clock would be set at nine months and counted down. A nine month tack clock doesn't mean anything to anyone. A tack clock is supposed to serve as a timing mechanism that provides feedback in short increments just like the coxswain did in the rowing example. Now, when building a ship, there are four major sections that are constructed. They are the bow, the stern, the deck house, and the mid body. The mid body is the largest section and takes the most man hours to complete. 
can be divided into as many equal sized sections as we want. Regardless of the number of units we decide to slice the midbody into, the work content of each unit is close enough to be sent down the exact same production line. So in our model, we had the luxury of defining the number of units we were going to build. So we were manipulating the denominator of the tack time equation. In shipbuilding, this is an optimization game that requires us to maximize the number of pieces while minimizing the amount of total major welds. This is because welds add man hours and can impact our total cost in our tack time model. After doing some math, we found that a 2.5 day tack time would be easiest to track from a management perspective. This is because we could easily make sure that one of these massive units moved two spots on the production line during a 5 day work week. So we fixed our tack time at 2.5 days. We knew we had 9 months or 180 total working days to build the vessel. We gave this constraint to our manufacturing engineering group and they in turn divided the mid body into 72 equal size units for us to construct. So we literally set our own tack time. Now, don't feel trapped by any of these concepts. There's actually ways to manipulate cycle time, and there are also ways to manipulate tack time. Tack time is nothing more than a pacing mechanism to help serve your organization, not the other way around. So use it in a way that helps you achieve your goals. Textbooks will always tell you that tack time is set by the customer. From an academic perspective, they are absolutely correct. But in the real world, there are options. You can manipulate your tack time to service your organization as well as the customer as a previous example showed. Now, there's another way to manipulate tack time. Remember, tack time is available time divided by units of customer demand. We just manipulated number of units. What about manipulating available time? You can absolutely do this. What about adding a few standard hours to the end of each shift? How about adding a whole new shift? How about running on the weekends? All of these options allow you to manipulate tack time. Again, this is a tool that serves you, not the other way around. So, what about manipulating cycle time? This can be done by adding or removing workers, or adding or removing machinery. The list goes on and on. In this quick example, our worker is able to meet the tack time of 60 seconds. But the tack time changes to 30 seconds. So, we manipulate our cycle time by adding another worker to the cell. We split the work between the two workers in the cell and now they can meet the tack time of 30 seconds. Now, if adding workers doesn't reduce your cycle time enough, you could subcontract some of the early stage assembly so all your facility has to do is the final stage assembly. The point is, you shouldn't feel victimized by your cycle time. If you can't meet tack time, then come up with a creative solution to manipulate your cycle time to meet tact. Still can't meet tact? Then change your tact. Can't add another shift? then subcontract half the volume demanded by your customer. The choices are limitless if you just take some time to think about it. Now, I know I'm upsetting some lean purists out there right now, but the purpose of this portion of the tack time series is to provoke thought. I personally believe in maintaining the integrity of the Toyota production system, and hopefully this last portion sheds some light on how flexible the system really is. All too often I see leaders give up on their lean journey after a simple back of the envelope calculations that don't work out. Remember, TPS, or the Toyota Production System, has also been called the Thinking Production System. Think about how you can use and adapt the system to benefit your organization and take one step closer to your view of perfection. So here's a quick summary of what we learned. We defined what tack time was, we explored the relationship between tack time and cycle time, and we showed you how to manipulate tack time. <laughs>